journalism. That would be nice for your conscience, wouldn't it? How? Oh, the thank that you just to thank that you. That is that? Let's just talk. I'm not trying to be mean. I know. I'm just saying. To thank. Well, I'm not going to go into all the scriptures that would re rebuke that and re refute that. But wouldn't it be nice though if, if there was no consequences for all these things that we're doing? Believe me, I've done probably a lot worse than you've ever thought about doing. I used to be the guy throwing these parties. So I'm just saying I understand like. Well, I un here's the concept. I understand all I'm these. I'm still things. a Christian. So in the concept of still believing in Christ and the concept of him believing that he saved me from all my sins and that I'm not necessarily doing anything that contradicts the will of God but I still believe that nothing happens in the afterlife what happens okay so you said and it's in Luke chapter Luke, I think it's in Luke chapter 1 you just you just basically said Jesus saved you from your sins okay so if that's the case then Jesus didn't save you in your sin he saved you from your sins that means that like he said in John 8, 11, he said, go and sin no more. So you're telling me that right now you're not living well, that's in... Taken a con here? that's taken a conditionalism perspective. Okay. However, if I take an annihilationist perspective, I'm living in the will of God without reward or punishment. Thus, I'm strictly living for God with nothing holding me. Okay. Well, I, I, suggest, I suggest that you get back in the Bible and start studying the words of Jesus. Read through the book of Revelation. It talks about the smoke of their torment ri ri rising forever. So... Uh, Jesus said himself, he said, don't fear man that can kill the body, but then afterwards can do no more. But fear the one after he kills the body can throw your soul into hell. I say fear him. So hellfire is talked about all throughout the scriptures as being a place of eternal torment where the worm never dies and the fire never goes out. So I have a bachelor's I in theology and the concept of hell is really shaky, especially when we look at the concept of what it was historically and culturally at the time, where you seem like you're, so you're doubting. Already. You're doubting the word of God. No, you're not doubting. doubting the word of God. Yeah. It's the idea of when we look at the cultural context of what Gehenna was, for example, Gehenna was a symbolic place of what happened with King Manasseh when he was sacrificing children in fire. When we look at the concept of Tartaru or Tartarus, that is a strict place strictly for fallen angels. When we look at the concept of Hades, that was just a translation between Jews and Gentiles, which got lost in translation. When we look at the concept of Shul, that is the Jewish mentality of sleep, where some Jewish mentality believe that there was a resurrection, others believe in strictly annihilation. Well, how do you explain in Luke 16 with uh, Lazarus and the rich man? No, Lazarus sure. and the rich man was a parable that was a threat towards the um, Pharisees. Because the Pharisees, specifically we look at the concept that Lazarus was named, but the rich man wasn't. The Pharisees were the one being told the story, along with a bunch of other people, and the Pharisees were pretty much the ones who were mostly affected by the story. Well, do you believe that all scripture is inspired by God? Uh, let's see. I believe that all scripture is inspired by God. Do you think it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, I think thoroughly that, furnished unto all good works? That's what I the think that says. there is a constructional context that we need. There is a lot more that we don't understand and we cannot know the full will of God because God is all is pretty much all objective if we look at a philosophical perspective and all of us people are just relatives we do not have objectivity thus we cannot understand the full will of god it's for us to struggle and understand and learn about god okay well he says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of god so we know it's god's will for us to love god and to love each other and how do we know how to love? Well, we see the examples in the scriptures that, that the word gives us. You know what I mean? We know love... And that's when we look at that concept, though. It is the God of the oppressed, especially if we look through the prophets and if we look through the um, kings, if we look through chronicles, if we look through all the major prophets and the minor prophets. So love does no ill towards its neighbor. So um, this is the love of God that you keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So we know... Um, that whatever or whosoever, whosoever whoever's born of God, uh, the Bible says in first, I think it's first John 5, 4 it says, Whosoever is born of God uh, doth not sin, but he that's begotten of God keepeth his, keeps himself, keeps himself, and the evil one touches him not. Uh, we know that we're of God, and the whole world lies under uh, uh, under the wicked one. And he says, But we know that the that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him, is tr in him that is, is true even in his son Jesus Christ and then it says this is the one true God and then it says 
little children keep yourself from idols. So don't don't you think this is putting the sexual immorality aside? Because I've done a lot of that, and you know what? I've been I've been forgiven of that. I, I go and sin no more on that. Put aside that. Don't you think this is a worldly festival, like an idolatrous festival that celebrates celebrating sin? I don't see this as idolatrous. As rather, I would see. I have to go to in politics if I do that. I would have to see the concept of like capitalism as idolatrous, where we worship oh, money. Sure. Which I am fully against. Whereas sure. this, I see this as more of trying to understand humanity on an egalitarian level. There is no favoritism upon another for what they do. Well, I mean, gee, I mean, the word says, though, uh, do not be a hearer of the word, deceiving yourself, but be a doer. So, you know, so you sound like you're a hearer of the word, but you're not a doer. That means, you know... Why not a doer of the word? Because you're, because, you're saying that you're kind of sounding like the... Um, kind of like some of the people I've talked to that are like... Um, like to follow like a Lester Crowley or something like yeah but then the you're just like, making like, assumptions do, like, no you sound like I'm not saying you are I'm just saying you're saying like do what thou will you know what I mean what if it feels good do it whatever you want to do you can be my whatever my view of it is yeah. we have to reach out and help our neighbor sure. my view of it is that who is the oppressed has to be lifted up who those who are exalted should be humbled and those who are humbled should be exalted sure absolutely and don't you think a pride event you know, and, I, and listen, I go, I go to 100 events a year, and I go to maybe 10 pride events. So I mean, it's, I, it's not like I'm individual, you know, coming just to the pride events. It's people are here. You know what I mean? So that's, I love people. So God loves people. Jesus died for everybody. You know, so, so it's not picking on any people. But pride, you know, there's no connotation, no scripture in the Bible that ever puts a positive light on pride. Pride, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Yeah, but then I think that we're playing with words. Because the purpose of pride is exalting the humble purpose of pride is exalting the humble yeah well those that the resist LGBT people are considered humbled in society because they are a minority group that is totally contradictory you know why because Lucifer who was a cherub in heaven was what was beautiful he, he had organs built into his frame where he probably made music when he moved and he exalted himself in pride and he was so once again we're playing with words though well, that's the what word the Bible says. He's, the Bible no, says you're, you're taking the concept of pride as the word of whole into a, the whole sin of pride. That's what the Bible teaches. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the event. You're taking the whole event as pride of pride being the sin. Of pride. Okay. How about a divorce? A divorce festival. As a divorce festival, <laughs> I need to ask you this. God hates divorce, right? Right. That is said in Malachi, if I remember. Yeah. God hates divorce. Okay. What it's not is, the unforgivable sin. I'm not saying that. I know. I'm saying what is, what is the thing that holds divorce down? In the Bible, it says infidelity. Now, however, we have changed that on a cultural perspective, right? Well, Jesus changed that when he, when grace and truth came through Jesus. He said, if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you already committed adultery in your heart. He says, if your eye causes you now, to sin, this is pluck a, it out. Now, let's look at it. Your on hand this, causes you to sin, cut it, it off. This way. On a cultural perspective, abuse. Is that merit for divorce? Abuse? Yes, because that is not in the Bible. Uh, well, I believe I believe that every circumstance is different. There are there are times like First Corinthians chapter seven um, talks about if the unbelieving spouse wants to stay with the believing spouse, then the then the then the believing spouse shouldn't depart from them because through their conduct they can be saved you know what I mean so but if the unbelieving spark if the unbelieving spouse departs uh, it we're says, still it says we're not in bondage believers so and there's so, a belief in, in like there's abuse within the two believers marriage well Jesus said that uh, if, if there's any other cause besides fornication now there can be spiritual fornication right so it does fornication or adultery can be not only physical but it also could be spiritual so I believe that there are some people that are justified that are being abused and, and uh, abandoned I, and I abused. Think we're, I think we're playing with the scripture then, if we're going to go in that direction. No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, I don't believe that. Um, I don't believe that Jesus wants. Uh, for example, I don't believe that he wants that. But I don't at the believe same that. Time, he I don't, had to speak to the culture that was at the time who allowed that. If you and say you were married to an, another a woman. And you were beating her and raping her. You know, I know you wouldn't do that, but I hope you would. So, you know, she, I believe that she would be justified um, in, in departing from you. In departing from you. 
Uh, I, do, I do believe that. I do believe that. So then I think that we're taking on perspective of the scripture, not actually what the scripture So says. you're telling me that she wouldn't be justified? I'm saying that that would be wrong, but I'm saying if we read strictly from scripture, that is not scripture. Mm, depends that on your, inter depends on your interpretation exactly. of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Uh, and I can't remember where it's at. And the Gospels, you know, but but it's in there. I remember chapter six. I don't remember chapter. And that, First Corinthians seven, and then and then in Matthew, I, I believe it's Matthew. I'd have to I'd have to look it up. I don't know if it's somewhere in six or seven. But anyways, maybe I'm wrong on that. But I'm just saying that. Verse six was on um, food, um, by stomach for the food and food for the stomach, and right. then like uh, permissible. Right. And then things. seven starts out with. Uh, judge not lest you be judged with the same judgment you judge will be measured back to you. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? You know, blank in your own eye. First remove the speck out of your own eye. Are we talking about Matthews or first Corinthians? That was Matthew. Sorry. Okay. That was Matthew 7. That was Matthew 7. Okay. But my point is though, it's not God's will for you, hypothetically, to, to be beating on your wife. And it's not God's. She, she, the Lord will deliver her out of that situation either by killing you, if, hypothetically. Either by taking you out one way or another, putting you in jail, or somehow God's going to deliver her from that situation. She would have to seek the Lord on that situation. And then each individual, the new covenant, God says, you write your laws are upon our hearts. Jesus said, I think it's uh, John 10, 39. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they won't follow a stranger. So you would have to hear from God. She would have to hear, the hypothetical woman here, she would have to hear from God in that situation, whether to wait and let God fight that or or God would make a way out for her one way or another uh, but I, it's not God's will for anybody to stay in an abusive relationship I mean look at all of I'm not like well I, I hope no, I'm not annoying you here no, so not do annoying you mind me. if we have this uh, conversation for a bit because yeah, like, um, can I explain to you Please. like some of the things I do believe yeah. okay so I explained to you that my I'm name is an John what's your name John okay John nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, I said that I'm an annihilationist my view of God Christ's salvation is the concept that it was pretty much a design for how the world should be. So salvation was, hey, this is a layout for humanity. Please follow this if we want humanity to strive and survive properly in God's will. Okay? Now, I am slightly on the conditionalist mentality. Conditionalism is annihilationism, but on the concept of people who follow the will of God will eventually be ascended to the kingdom of God. Oh, so not everybody's destroyed. Some people go to heaven. Yeah, but that is something I'm uh, about. I'm, I pretty much want to live my life as an annihilationist because I want to live for God without reward or punishment. Okay. Um, I am also, this is where it's going to get a little iffy for you. Um, I'm a deist. I don't believe God interacts with the world. I, let me rephrase it. I'm an ecclesial deist. I believe that... God cannot interact with sin. God spent his whole time within the Old Testament trying to keep the world together, and thus he became flesh. And then once God experienced the world as human, he, after his ascension, left the world to our own volition. We are on our own, and God wants us to follow his will without I know that sounds like a. Can I ask a question just to understand about it? Nothing yeah, further. Sure. So you don't believe in uh, like First John? I think it's First John uh, five seven. There are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Do you believe that, or do you yeah. believe? Do you believe in? Uh, are you uh, a Unitarian? Yeah. Are you a Unitarian? Uh, yeah. Kind of because on the concept that the Trinity was actually formed more along the um, second century. Um, that wasn't really a real concept until like later on, after, way after the Bible was written. So you're saying the, the Catholic Church invented that? This was a, just at the starting of the Catholic Church. Okay. Um, Is that like Constantine? Constantine, I think, was around uh, second or third 300. Century. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this was second century. Oh, okay. Or second, 200 something. Okay. Um, uh, and it was a lot of people just trying to explain towards like more of the Stoics and more of the um, the Greek philosophers. Yeah. Have you looked into any of the like, Polycarp or Josephus or or um, any of those guys? Have you ever uh, looked? I've read into a little bit of Josephus. I've read more of Philo, but yeah. uh, that's not Christianity. Yeah. That's more Judaism. Yeah, because obviously those guys were before before that, before what you were just talking about. Because uh, Polycarp was a disciple of. Um, 
of John, the Apostle John, and then um, I think Saint, Saint, I think Saint Ignatius, I think was a disciple of Polycarp, I think. So I know that they talked about. They didn't obviously talk about the word Trinity. They didn't say Trinity, but they they but they did distinguish a difference between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now we know that those three are one. I believe in one God. I'm not a polytheist or anything like that. Yeah. But I know you. I yeah, know, I yeah, know the yeah. concept of. The so you know the concept of you know right. So you know through the scripture it says that Jesus is into the right hand of God. You know even in Revelation it talks about there being. Um, he who overcomes shall sit down with me on my throne as I have overcome and sit down with my Father on His throne. Revelation talks about multiple thrones, Jesus having a throne, the Father having a throne. So it's kind of hard to wrap your head around, but I believe the Bible I, I teaches that, us. I believe the Bible teaches us that that the okay. I believe the Bible teaches that Jesus is not the Father and the Father is not Jesus. Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not Jesus. But they're all God. You know what I mean? So, so I just wanted to. I had a question about that. That's why I wanted to understand what a. What I, do the have, I do have the concept. I do understand the concept of the Trinity. Yeah. I grew up as an evangelical. Um, okay. But like, yes, I am a Unitarian. I believe that God incarnated Himself. I think that the Holy Spirit that resides in us is God breathed. Since there are some Jewish philosophers who do believe in the concept of holding divinity, what we would call the Holy Spirit as our own life force. But it's just something that's been suppressed through sin. Yeah. And once we follow God's will, we have more of that God likeness coming through us as such pretty much the lamp that reflects us. Okay. That was meant to matter. So you believe John that you're you're on your own now? There's no there's no um Further revelation being given. There's no more prophecy. There's no more gifts of the spirit. You don't believe the gifts. You don't believe the gifts of the spirit. A lot of people. A lot of people complained about revelation even being put into like the Bible in the first place. The Ethiopians did not even allow the um, revelation to be in their Bible up until I think about 1400, 1500. A lot of people complained about that, but Augustine kind of pushed for that when. And okay, no, for Augustine. Augustine did defend revelation being in the Bible. So what is your take on the original original sin? Uh, the original you sin, if you, you look at Augustine, uh, if you look at um, Jewish philosophers and Jewish theologians, original sin is a Catholic made up thing. It was made up from Augustine, and original sin does not really exist. I agree. I agree with that. Uh, Ecclesiastes, I think, seven twenty six. Uh, God says that He made man upright, but they sought out many inventions. You know what I mean? So basically. He met, God made man upright, but they sought out wicked devices and wicked inventions and things like that. So, um, so then we can look at the um, creation of man. God, man is pretty much. Let's say that again. The, the then what? we can look at the creation of man. Right. What is man? Man is made in God's image. God's image. Are reflected of God. Right. But what is God other than a force of power? And man trying to seek their own power breaks away from God's objectivity, God's will, and thus we are no longer objective. We are our own world. We create. Our relative truth. Well, yeah, we've all gone astray. We've all we've all sinned and, and, and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all gone. I agree, we've gone astray, but we weren't born under no, the we wrath of God. The, we weren't, we weren't born, born under the wrath of God. We, I believe that there's no set age. I know, like Jews say, the boys, you know, 13, they become a man or whatever. That's probably a pretty good age, of 12, 13, of when. But sometimes it's younger. Maybe sometimes it's a little older. But you know, there's like a age of accountability per se of like an age of where you understand good and evil like for example in the promised land um those that were those that were able to go you know all the jews all the all the israel died in the wilderness ex, you know except for you know um you know joshua and caleb and, and some of the little ones that got in or whatever so so um so that i think that's a shadow of like now like there's a lot of kids that are uh, haven't reached that age, whatever. God has to figure that out. I don't. I don't have that age, but I'm just saying. But then so, that goes on the objectivity of God. God has the absolute truth of it, and we can't understand that truth. About the age, the age of accountability. I know. I know it's I just for us to try our best with that. Right. Well, we're supposed to train up children in the way they should go when they're young, and then when they're old, they won't depart from it. The problem is, John. I wasn't taught the way of righteousness when I was young. I grew up a child of the devil serving, I grew up in, you know, I wasn't trained in righteousness. I was I was trained in graffiti, I was trained in pornography, I was trained in uh, lying. I would say that makes you the god of the devil, I would say that just makes you a victim of this cruel world. 
No. See, sinners are not victims, they're criminals. Okay? They're not. That's the sinners are absolutely victims. Oh, no. No. So, no, we choose to sin. We choose to stay who you will serve. We choose to serve sin. We don't have to choose sin. Then we can ask another question. This is where it gets a little obnoxious. I apologize for this. But what is will? What is will? Like, uh, I believe in, like, uh, fatalism. Okay. Which is pretty much like almost self determinism, but a little more will. But we are pretty much victims of impulse. We are pretty much victims of our environment. And we only know of what we see and what we have been exposed to. Okay. I think it's in Romans 9. I could be could be wrong, but I think it's in Romans 9. It said, for whom God... Okay, so would you agree that God knew all of us in our mother's womb? Yes. Okay. So for whom God did foreknow, he did predestine to become conformed to the image of his... we're talking about predestination there. Well, that's Romans 9. I'm saying that I'm saying, for whom God did foreknow, he did predestine from the womb to be conformed to the image of his son. So it's God's will. No, it's God's will, though. It's God's will for all of Israel to be saved. Who's Israel? Well, if we were to be honest, I would say the Jewish people. No, no, yes, no, yes. no, no. That's the old, that's, that's, uh, that's the old covenant. We're under the new covenant. All of Israel will be saved. We know all of Israel wasn't saved. They would die in the wilderness. All of Israel wasn't saved. God says in his word that all of Israel will be saved. Okay? So all of Israel are all the people of God, all the born again, all those that have been grafted in. Uh, not, so not all those of Israel are Israel. That's in Romans 9 too. So we've been grafted in. As Gentiles, if you're a born again Christian, you've been grafted into the vine. Okay? So if you're a born again Christian. So that's, that's all Israel or all those that are that are born again, that are children of Abraham through faith in Jesus Christ. So, through faith, through faith what? In Romans 1 it said we're called to obedience, so we're called to be sons of God through what? Through apostleship and obedience to the faith. So, it's not so much what we say, it's what we do. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but then we have to also look on what our people, pretty much, are we as people, even if we, okay, ignore what you probably know, what, I already know what you're about to say on this response, but we as people, if we can accept the concept of God without accepting the concept of God, okay, like, we have an absolute idea of pure love. God is love, but we do not necessarily know God, I know what you're going to say in response to that, then, if we do righteous with that concept, are we still safe? No, that's idolatry. You know, what's the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other God but, but me. But Thou shalt make no ask, graven image. Then you have to ask, what is idolatry? Because the concept of love is that idolatry. Well, it can be because you know what? Even the Bible says that the devil counterfeits as an angel of light. Okay, so my interpretation of love could be that me and you in a relationship, and I'm faithful to you. You're I'm not talking about eros love. I'm talking about the concept of just being humbled and giving to your neighbor. Right. Charity? Charity? Yes. Okay. Well, listen. What's the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit? Love, uh, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right. Gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, patience, self-control, temperance. Right. So you got that. So, okay. So, so um, the Bible says that against such there is no law. There's no law against that. There's no law against the fruit of the Spirit. And it says, and those that are Christ have crucified the flesh and its desires okay so we gotta we gotta get rid of this flesh man this flesh is evil you know and that's why first peter 4 1 and 2 says this then you're going following the concept of the original sin well let me repeat the scripture real fast just chew on this for a second remember it i know you've read it first peter 4 1 and 2 says for as much then as christ has suffered in the flesh for, for us Arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer shall live the rest of this life in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. I'm getting back to the will of God. So thus that also can be on the concept. This is where I'm going on my annihilation rant, where we actually are following the will of God, but that is on the first uh, perspective of trying to change the world to fit God's image, not on us trying to be saved and going to heaven. Well, in the flesh, John, it's impossible to please God. 
Yeah, in the flesh it's hot because you because that's the same thing. It goes along the lines with without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe right. that he is. So you're and saying that he's anything a, that we do is... And that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So this revelation can only be found through seeking him. You gotta humble yourself as a little child. And you gotta you gotta get alone with him. He's gotta be your your morning, your lunch, your dinner. Everything in you has to seek him. And, and, and when you do that, he promises to reveal himself to you and make his home inside of you. His father, the father and the son will make a, their home inside of you. And then you'll be able to understand this revelation of Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom I'm preaching to you. Christ in me, man. I used to be a raver, man. I used to be into all this stuff. And I'm telling you, you Christ, I'm just like, saying, once you taste of and see that the Lord is good, you won't want to do some of these types of things anymore because you what know why? Thing? <laughs> Partaking of the cup of demons, drinking and eating at the table You're of demons. You're speaking in metaphors, just be blind. You smell it in the air? You just notice that? Yeah. Believe Whoa. it or not, a lot of stuff <laughs> That's like just the one thing, thing in the That's air. That's one thing. Believe it or not, a lot of the things that are in the air were used as medicine for ancient society that we would call drugs today, especially opioids, because opioids were a thing back then. But that was actually used as medicine back then. So we are trying to play the lines of what is drugs because of recreational use? Well, motive. The Lord weighs the spirits. He knows every, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, John. But the Lord weighs the spirits. He weighs your motives. Why are you doing what you're doing? And we know that most people that are doing that are not doing it for medicinal purposes. They're doing it to not be sober. They're doing it to escape reality. They're doing it to feel better. Then we have to look at the root of why they're doing that in the first it's place. A hard, a it's that, a hard issue. A lot of it actually is a sociological issue because of just environmental sin, crap. Sin, sin. No, just it's the sin. environment pretty much wears down people. And we have to look at the heart of people on the sense that people are pretty much being abused in society. I'm okay. I just was seeing if it's two o'clock yet. Yeah, there's supposed to be some people at two. I, I probably I, I, I have until two o'clock. I know you might be not, not have until two o'clock, but I definitely have till two o'clock to talk to you. So I'm, I really I appreciate your time. I've really been encouraged by this conversation. Um, one scripture that keeps coming to my mind. I think it's Ezekiel 18:4. It says, um, God saying, "Behold." It's like get your attention, like red light blinking. Behold, he says, "All souls are mine." The soul of the Father and the soul of the Son is mine. And he said, the soul that committeth sin shall die. Okay, so, so I'm hoping that you will maybe think about this conversation as you get into the scriptures again and reading the word, studying to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed. Okay, I'm hoping that you get back in there. I think right, you're making a lot of rightly, I'm hoping. I really do follow this stuff. On I'm hoping. Daily. I'm hoping that you get back in there and rightly divide the word. But it seems like you're searching to make it seems, excuses. It seems like you seems like you're much searching. want to find God as an authoritarian domination. Whereas oh. God is a God of pretty much love. God pretty much wants us to come to him. If we look at, uh, what was it, the prodigal son story, pretty much God just wants us to connect with him. He wants us to come back to him. But we have so many people who believe that they're doing the work that the Father wants, that they are diligent working, that the moment that just because someone comes back to him, we get bitter and we get angry towards the people who are just, who live their lives, but so long as they're still communing with God, we're angry at them because of it. Well, Psalm 711 says, the boastful shall not stand in my sight. Uh, no, Psalm 55 says, I hate all workers of iniquity. Psalm 711 says, God is angry with the wicked every day. Now, why would God be angry with people? Why would God be angry? Because people aren't following his will. And I think that Amen. the issue with that is the concept of domination, the concept that we want power over people, the concept that we're trying to control how people are living their lives when people should be choosing to go together. You remember the scripture in 1 Corinthians 6, uh, beginning of verse 9, it says, Do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I see the same thing with the evangelical church. And it says, Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Then it says this, the good news is, as such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. 
So the good news is we don't have to stay in fornication or idolatry or homosexuality or whatever the sin is. The good news is that we can come out of those things through the grace of God by, by faith. We're saved by grace through faith, right? That not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. Here's back to the will of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It says, for you are, uh, for you are uh, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that you should walk in them. So with that scripture, coupled with the other scripture I've given you, we see that God has a narrow plan, a narrow path for all of us to walk. But he gives us the free will to choose how we walk. But on this path that we're on, John, we got a million other avenues to take. And all if we take those million other avenues, all along those avenues, he's reaching out to people through me or through you, you or through somebody to try and get them to get back onto the narrow path. That's love. That's love right there. Love is love is to be reconciled to God. But it but, seems like a lot of what I see from Christians is more on the domination of creating an idea of love that does not exist. Well, well, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, like I told you. And Jesus said in John 15, 14, if you love me, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, John. That's 14, 15, then 15, 14, I believe, is Jesus said, you're my friend if you do whatsoever I command. Hebrews 5, 9 says, Jesus is the author of salvation for all those that obey him. Get that. Okay. It's not it's not a work salvation, but your, your works will follow your faith. I'm not sure what I'm not obeying then. Um, you have to take that to the Lord. But, and I think I'm good. But, but you'll know a tree by its fruit. And so right now, I believe you're bearing bad fruit. And a bad tree will be cut down at the root and thrown into the just, fire. I think you're just making assumptions there. No, I think I'm no, no, how do you know a tree? If, if this was, I have, uh, I've had pear trees, apple trees. Um, Let what, me ask, uh, are you making that assumption because I'm here at Pride? Well, you've got the beads around your neck. Um, you're here. Um, and you're not here to evangelize, from what I can tell. You're here to partake in what's going on here, from what I can gather. Are you not? Are you here to work? Or what are you doing? Well, I am divorced. Let me establish that. So I am celibate because of my divorce. Huh? However, I am here because this is community to me. This is people that I care about. And I think that these are people who need to be loved. I agree. I agree. But you need to love them with the knowledge of God that you have. I do. Yes. And however, my knowledge of God is different than your knowledge of God. Well, you you have a tolerant, you know, man upstairs uh, relationship with somebody that's tolerant with sin. I, the God I serve is not tolerant. God also just allows me to die instead of just going to heaven. No, uh, my 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 most high God that I serve is sending His Son Jesus in flaming fire with His mighty angels to take vengeance on all those that do not know you're God following a book and that do was not never meant to be in the Bible. This is this is this is the Bible. You're talking about a book that was written in 200 A.D. He says he's coming back in flaming if fire. I believe that revelation was written by John. It wasn't flaming fire to take vengeance on all those that know not God and obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Revelation it says it was a political writing that was meant to reflect on the emperors. Of the this time. is Thessalonians, and he says that, and he says he's going to lay the land desolate, and he's going to destroy all of the sinners in it. And he says he says these will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and the glory of His power. So, so you you don't believe? Well, no, I'm talking about everlasting destruction burning forever not like annihilation that's see like I was gonna tell you it when still you, sounds like annihilation because if you look at the context if you actually look at what the Bible says in its original everlasting scripture. destruction it burning forever of age not of eternity but of age everlasting never ends of age within the context means it ends oh. And even then, if you want to go back to Revelation, I hate that book because it should not be in the Bible. However, if we actually look at Revelation, then it talks about the eventual destruction of everything except a new heaven and new earth. There is no more hell after that. So there is eventually still not eternal destruction. So that's contradictory. No, that's you trying to justify your sin, John. How am I sinning? That's all you're doing. You're running from God. You're just trying to justify. You're trying to hide under every rock that you can spiritually and sin. And, and, it sounds like you're pretend. trying to define what loving God is for me. No. I think that you probably need to find what it is to love your neighbor. No. You're like, the prophet Isaiah spoke well of people like you. He said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. 
That's you. It sounds in like love, you I'm telling you that. It That's sounds love. like you need to learn how to love other people. I'm loving you with the truth. How much loving could I be? I'm loving you know you that I'm telling I'm loving you with the truth. The only no, thing is, you're telling you lies. believe that my truth is not true. You're speaking lies and hypocrisy. How? By telling me you're that I, there's not going to be consequences for my You're giving a modern perspective pretty much of something that is completely different. Well, Isaiah also said that hell has enlarged okay. herself. To, to enlarge. So hell, so you got to deal with that scripture too. Literally, hell is enlarging herself, making room for people that want to do it your way. They want to do it their way. And you know what? If I believed in annihilism, it would be very easy for me to know that. Well, I can do whatever I want because there's no that, there's no just, consequences. And that follows the same thing of like, why does the gate and brought us the road? Right. Because if it was just annihilation, people honestly would not care to follow God. Whereas the people who want to follow God, even though there's nothing afterwards, that's real Christianity. That is real love with God because there's no reward. There's no punishment. It's just wanting to be immune with God. Man, that would that that is a that that would be a very unjust God. Not to punish these child like child molester, people that uh, What more you know, punishment is than just to cease to exist? Because for the longest time in all of human history, that was the ultimate punishment. Oh, no, that's not, no, no, they're, they're, they're criminals, and that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that there would be no uh, eternal punishment for, for people like that, you know what I mean? And, it, and not just people that bad, but I mean, just, I mean... And you want to put that in the same category as someone who is just here because he wants to be in community? Well... I just know that Jesus loves righteousness and he hates iniquity. So if you have if you're loving what Jesus hates and hating what Jesus loves, then you're double minded. The Bible says you're unstable in all your ways. But so, then again we have to look at what Jesus loved, but it's to a flaw. Right. Well cleanse your hands, you sinner, purify your heart, you double minded. Because you're double minded. You want a God of your own imagination, and um, I leave you with that. You need to get to know the God of the Bible before you burn in hell. John, I'll be praying for you. And I appreciate your time. Do you have a YouTube channel I could follow or anything? No, but okay. honestly, I hope you can find in your heart actual true love for other people. You don't God think bless that's you. God bless you. You want a card? No, thank you. Because okay. honestly, those cards are just saying that people don't deserve God. All right. Well, examine yourself and test yourself whether you truly be in the faith. You need to test yourself. Examine yourself, okay? Read Trust the Bible. Me. Trust me. For how long I did not know God and hated myself, I do that every day. Bitterness will blind your eyes. That's the Lord speaking to me what am I being through you. About? I don't know. That the Lord speaking that through. Bitterness will blind you. So you can you can be you can be you can be you can, be, you can, a, you can an be interesting deceived. psychological. You're a delusion. You're under a strong no, delusion right now. You're believing a lie. There's that, an interesting that might psychological be thing where when people want to say critique of someone else, they're usually critiquing themselves. So that's what blinded me too. All that bitterness. You know, I had bitterness in me for years. You know, and then finally in 2010, I was able to forgive all the people that hurt me, forgive all the people that did me wrong, forgive uh, all the people. You know, I was I was really abused when I was younger, and I uh, went through a lot of pain and a lot of heartache, a lot of a lot of misfortunes, a lot of a lot of bad things. So I had a lot of bitterness inside me. So I don't know what the blockage is for you, but there's some type of bitterness in you, and uh, I pray that the Lord will deliver you from that as you humble yourself and ask Him to reveal Himself to you and stop trying to be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. Try, try, stop trying to think that you found objectivity in God. God okay. loves you. That's your word. Okay, be, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. And yours is what? What'd you say to me? Try not to believe you found objectivity in God. God is something to struggle with and learn and constantly learn. Okay. You were never done learning about God. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I have faith like a child. I, I come before Him and I seek Him and I ask Him to, to reveal all truth to me. And uh, you know what? But you know what? I know that I'm I am abiding in Jesus Christ. And you know what? He says, if anyone abides in me, he ought to walk even as I walked. So if Jesus here were here at this festival right now, he would be telling them like they told the people in uh, Luke 13, where he said, "Except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish." So that's all I'm saying: repent or perish. All right. Okay. God bless you. Nice talking to you. I might see you later. All right. Ready? Yep. Wow. Good encounter? Yes. Shame, pervert, shame. 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 shame.